Uh, welcome to my talk on, the, on an overview of the vectorization tool Zoo. And I want to help you to choose the right vectorization method for your application. So I will start with the use case we examine in this research and then which different vectorization methods uh, we tried and we evaluated. Then I will give you some performance numbers and in the end the conclusion or a handbook for you if you want to use vectorization and you don't know yet which tool you might want to use. So what we want to do essentially is motion estimation. So if we have a frame at timestamp t and a frame before at timestamp t minus one, we want to see how objects move in these, between these two images. This might be a use case for television or for automotive driver assistant systems and anything else. And as you might expect, this is a block-based approach. So we divide our reference image in a grid of blocks and for each block, we search for the corresponding block with the maximum similarity in the uh, other frame at the timestamp before. So you might want to write this in C style as a triple composed for loop where you loop over all blocks in horizontal and vertical direction and then for every block you have a set of candidate blocks you might want to examine to see which has the maximum similarity and it's quite common to use the sum of absolute differences to calculate the similarity and the sum of absolute differences is simply the accumulation of all pixel wise absolute differences between these two blocks. So as you might see from these uh, triple composed for loop that this is the performance critical part and you might want to spend a lot of effort to optimize essentially this function to do this in minimum time as it's called a lot of times per frame. So there's kind of zoo of vectorization method and each has its it's right to be here, but not every vectorization method might not be useful for your use case. So um, you might want to start with a naive approach. So this is now the calculation of the sum of absolute differences for one block. So you iterate over the block height and the block width. Imagine that uh, A and B are pointers to the upper left hand or the upper left corner of your blocks and then you simply accumulate the absolute difference. So you might just want to push this in your compiler and hope that just as Mike Chandler told in the keynote that your auto vectorizer does a good job and that you get a um, powerful code of this uh, snippet. Um, so the auto vectorizer is nowadays included in most C++ compilers and you can opt, um, activate it either by using the O3 switch or other opt, uh, vectorization switches. You might want to give the compiler additional hits like use special SSE units, so you might give him hints which hardware accelerators are available in your processor. Um, now this is very naive code, so you might want to improve it. First to remove these IDX calculation with the multiplication in every iteration. Then um, you might want to fix these, maybe at compile time, unknown block dimensions by giving them fixed uh, loop lengths. Then you might want to mark these pointers A and B as restrict pointers and then the compiler has more opportunities to optimize it or to auto vectorize it. And you also might do an alignment of the pointers and give the compiler the hint that these pointers are aligned as you then might want to use aligned memory accesses for loads in this case. So uh, if you look at what's your, or what's the effort to use the auto vectorizer, it's nearly zero. <laughs> So it's uh, like, yeah, free lunch. So let's look what uh, Michael Wong told us in his talk about OpenMP. There is this new OpenMP Pragma, which was introduced in OpenMP 4.0. So essentially you can give the compiler all the hints you might give him also with these restrict keywords and anything else, just by giving him the hint he, use, he should use Open, uh, SIMD. There is a reduction on this variable SAD and it's a summating uh, reduction. My pointers are aligned. We already removed these IDX calculation and all these uh, pointer accesses are linear. And then we loop over each row. So this is now for a fixed uh, block dimension of 16 times 16. And we first loop over each row where we now calculate the row-wise accumulated absolute difference of all pixel values in these pointers PA and PB. 
and then loop over all the rows. So there's very few code adaption as you only have to put this progma in and then hope that the auto vectorizer, oh, OpenMP does the best. Then um, there was introduced with SIL plus these array slicing notation, which might be quite nice to read and also maybe known from MATLAB or anything else. So you just write your starting element and the element count. So this is now 16 elements. You calculate uh, element-wise the difference, then take the absolute value from that. Then you have another vector of which you then reduce with the special reduce function. So you see that the code effort, or the effort to manipulate this code is a little bit higher. And also the problem is that these are, especially for image processing purposes, mostly 8-bit values, which are not handled by SILK Plus so well as it's optimized for 4-byte values. So if you look in the disassembly of this code, you might want to first convert this to floating point values, calculate this in float, and then um, convert it back to 8-point values or whatever, <laughs> so which is not so useful. Um, and then as it's very performance critical in our case that we want to do this in automotive systems, uh, we used uh, intrinsics for either SSE instruction set, AVX, or also on these ARM cores we used NEON intrinsics. So there you have a lot of opportunities to, op uh, to optimize your code where you essentially just load rows in one red, uh, vector register, then calculate the SAD with an optimized instruction which is available, which is already called SAD. So with one instruction, you calculate for uh, 16 elements the absolute difference. Then you just have to reduce these elements, uh, accumulate over all rows, and in the end, reduce them. And in this SAD instruction from the Intel instruction set extension, there's already a uh, reduction for four neighboring elements included. So this is very nice code. You have a very low level access directly to the accelerators. Um, the disadvantages are that you only now support few platforms, especially now only these which have these SSE instruction set or the NEON instruction set, and the portability is nearly lost. Uh, there's a huge code adoption, but now let's see what's the performance gains you might get from this vectorization method. So if we now look on this chart where we I have in double logarithmic scale, either the area of the blocks from two times two to 16 times 16, and here's the clock cycles in logarithmic scale, you might see that for no vectorized version, we scale linear with the area. So for each element, uh, we do the same instructions, loading, calculating absolute difference, accumulating. And for the octo vectorizer, the clock cycle, so this is really an absolute clock cycles measured, is pretty much reduced. OpenMP is slightly better than the auto vectorizer, but not in most of the cases. So plus is better than the auto vectorizer, and we now see for these intrinsic that um, it doesn't make any sense to put two 8-bit values, which is in, uh, in some 16-bit, into a 128-bit vector register. So there is uh, nearly no advantage of using the compiler intrinsics here. But for uh, yeah, bigger blocks, you might get a speed up of nearly 85. So this is a huge performance gain. But if you use this and now combine the vectorization with maybe parallelization among a lot of cores, I just want to show you this additional chart where we now evaluated the execution time from the whole algorithm. So there's a, a few control full flow which might be sequential and not vectorized. And you see that, um, yeah, the two, three cores we scale quite well with the ideal scaling on this Intel processor. This is for the embedded processor with ARM architecture. But then, um, this is nearly saturating, so not to the maximum of four cores where we have four cores because um, sometimes two hardware threads share one vector unit. So you might want to deal with it in when you additionally have an outer parallelization about your inner vectorization. So the conclusion of my now small lightning talk is that if you um, have these three main categories, mainly which is outer vectorizers or OpenMP, so plus in this very hardware specific intrinsics. You, for, for performance reasons, you of course might want to use intrinsics, but there's a lot of effort and you support very few platforms. The auto vectorizer might be the choice with uh, zero effort and still plus is a kind of medium between all these vectorization methods. Uh, in the end, now on this conference, I learned that there are a lot of other 
possibilities. So I think in a parallel track now, there's a talk about Boost SIMD library, and there's also a light, which is uh, quite common for image processing tasks. And these are maybe also worth a try if you want to do very good vectorization. And now thank you for attendance, for attention, and I'm open for questions. On your benchmarking results, did you specify the available instruction set to the compiler for the auto vectorization? Yeah. Okay. So I said all these flags from SSE to SSE 4.5 at 4.2 and AVX and whatever. Okay. One more question. Did you also try different compilers to generate the code? No, this is uh, all the benchmarks are now done with the GCC 4.9. Um, so we're now looking on the Intel compiler, which might be better for Silk Plus, and also on the Clang compiler, but um, there are no results yet.